coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen. Skydweller Aero marks first flight of unmanned solar-powered Skydweller. Volt Aero begins certification tests on electric hybrid Casio 330. And Vertical Flight Society completes drone design competition for students. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight. From electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. Skydweller Aero marks first flight of unmanned, solar-powered Skydweller. Skydweller Aero successfully completed the first flight of its solar-powered aircraft, the Skydweller, earlier this month. This groundbreaking aircraft, which boasts a wingspan exceeding that of a Boeing 747, undertook its inaugural flight autonomously, without any human pilot on board or in direct control, from Stennis International Airport in Bay St. Louis, Mississippi. The Skydweller is designed for long-endurance missions and can operate over extended periods without the need for landing, positioning it as a sustainable alternative in fields such as military surveillance, environmental monitoring, and wildlife protection. Company officials highlighted its potential applications, including providing ongoing aerial coverage of conflict zones, maritime surveillance in contested waters, and tracking illegal activities like drug trafficking and poaching. One of the most remarkable features of the Skydweller is its capability of perpetual flight, with the potential to remain airborne for over 90 days at altitudes up to 45,000 feet. This is a stark contrast to traditional combustion-powered aircraft, which are generally limited to around 40 hours of flight time due to fuel capacity, pilot endurance, and maintenance needs. After the break, NAAA issues call for drone operators to give way to aerial applicators. I grew up in an aviation family. My dad flew airplanes and flew air shows, actually. So ever since I was three years old, the only thing I've ever wanted to do was be an air show pilot. It's cliche, but I get to live my dream every single day. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, the new aerobatic propeller. It's increased the performance of the airplane. It's made the harmonics balance throughout the airplane so much better. By far the best aerobatic propeller that I've ever flown behind. Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our Next Gen Minute. NAAA issues call for drone operators to give way to aerial applicators. As the U.S. agricultural season kicks into high gear, the National Agricultural Aviation Association is calling on both professional and hobbyist drone operators to exercise heightened awareness and caution during their flights. This appeal aims to mitigate the risks of aerial collisions as low-flying manned agricultural aircraft commence their crucial work over the nation's croplands. Agricultural aviators are responsible for treating an impressive 127 million acres of U.S. cropland annually. These operations often occur at altitudes as low as 10 feet at speeds up to 140 miles per hour. Viasat partners with UAVionics on UAV communications. Viasat has announced a partnership with UAVionics. This collaboration marks UAVionics' entry into Viasat's Valeris Partner Network following a strategic alliance agreement aimed at developing innovative products and services for the UAV market. UAVionics has initiated the integration of Viasat's Valeris module into its multi-link airborne radio system. This integration harnesses the power of Viasat's global L-band network, which is designed to provide secure, resilient communications for commercial UAVs. Oshkosh Defense tests A2 cargo 6x6 low-velocity drop. The U.S. Army Operational Test Command's Airborne and Special Operations Test Directorate recently conducted the final airdrop test of the Oshkosh Defense FMTV A2 Cargo 6x6 Low-Velocity Airdrop. 
The airdrops, which took place at Fort Liberty in North Carolina, mark a key milestone for the FMTV A2 LVAD program. The test validated the design and capabilities of the Cargo 6x6 LVAD to ensure its suitability for the stringent demands of airdrop and follow-on operations. Wright intros electric aircraft engine test cell. Wright Electric has announced the launch of its Wright Electric aircraft engine test cell. The WEA-ETC is designed to characterize the performance of megawatt-class electric aircraft propulsion systems. Wright's goal is to decarbonize the aerospace industry. Wright works with leading groups such as NASA, Y Combinator, the U.S. Department of Energy Advanced Research Projects Agency, and the U.S. DoD. Well, that was our Next Gen Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. Volt Aero begins certification tests on electric hybrid Casio 330. Volt Aero has commenced certification testing for the innovative electric hybrid powertrain of its Casio 330 aircraft. This testing phase marks a crucial step in the development of the Casio e-aircraft family, specifically tailored for the five-seat Casio 330. The testing is conducted on a ground-based bench that simulates real-world conditions using components designated for the final production model. The Casio 330's powertrain features a unique combination of Safran Electrical and Power's Engine US 100 Smart Electric Motor and a high-performance thermal engine from Kawasaki, derived from the renowned Ninja motorcycle. This setup delivers a total power output of 330 kilowatts, with the electric motor contributing 180 kilowatts and the Kawasaki engine providing the remaining 150. The tests are carried out at Akira Technologies in Bayonne, France, building on previous successes. The Casio 330's powertrain architecture has already proven its efficacy in flight tests using Volt Aero's Casio S testbed airplane. This aircraft, equipped with a 600 kilowatt version of the powertrain, has completed over 230 flights, covering 15,000 kilometers and landing at more than 40 airports. After these messages, Vertical Flight Society completes drone design competition for students. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate, or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. For over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all new digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon, www.sportplane.com. Welcome back. Vertical Flight Society completes drone design competition for students. The Vertical Flight Society selected the winners of this year's Design Build Vertical Flight Student Competition, sending the team from Texas A&M home with the gold. The competition assesses students' ability to draft, develop, and construct a VTOL drone from the ground up, and this year's wet and windy conditions added an additional level of difficulty on top of the normal trials and travails of the DBVF. Facing winds of 20 miles an hour, gusting up to 40, competing teams had to get knocked down and repair everything in time for another test run. The Texas students got a nice little bag of gold for their trouble, a prize of $2,750 secured with their biplane tail-sitting aircraft. The team from the University of Maryland came in second, earning them $1,125. And in third, the Georgia Institute of Technology got a modest $650 for their trouble. Some additional feats were recognized too. 
Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University's entrants got $500 for providing the best technical report, and the competition's host, Service Engineering, presented a Best Crash Award on top of that. The University of Maryland snatched that award with a nosedive from 100 feet up. Lastly, North Carolina A&T got the Best New Entrant Award for their efforts in tackling some difficult weather conditions. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. You just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.